Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second annual June uh, SOC camp uh, at KPS. And um, how many of you, let's see your wave at us if this is your first time at SOC camp. First time at SOC camp, not as a SOC knitter, but first time as a SOC camper. All right, very good. Who? This is your first time of socks. Who is it that this is your first time of doing a sock? Cecily is. Anybody else is your first time? Well, welcome for our sock knitters. Obviously, you're enthused about, um, about socks as we are enthused about socks. And this all started last year with, um, with uh, just kind of a lot of people do a sock camp. So I hope that you will find it equally as fun this year. I think it's a good opportunity for you to perfect your sock knitting skills to try a little different pattern, to do some different things that you might not do. And um, we hope that by the end of the month that you have really improved your sock knitting, you've learned some new things, you've learned um, some new skills. So um, this isn't really a formal teaching of how to knit a sock. Um, it's uh, lots of tips and tidbits that we're going to be giving you um, throughout these next, these upcoming weeks about sock knitting, things that we have learned. For those of you that have joined us later, if there's questions that you have, we'd appreciate you typing them in the chat um, so that we can kind of monitor them. Kay will be monitoring them and, um, and then um, she, can, she can ask, flag me down and, and ask those things. So there's really three things that we're going to look at tonight. We're going to talk about um, how sock camp works and i um, going to take you on a little bit of a tour of where your resources are for all of these things that we're going to be referring you to. And then we're talking about what our instruction is for this week. So um, this week we're going to be talking about the shadow wrap heel. So um, we are going to be using Denise's tutorial on the shadow wrap heel that is just excellent. Have some of you had a chance to kind of, we linked that early on. Isn't she a lovely teacher? Really does a nice job. So there's no real reason for us to replicate all of that. And, um, but I'll give you our link to our YouTube as well for the fish lips or the short row uh, heel too. So we'll be talking about a little bit of instruction and, and my favorite part of the shadow wrap heel, which is how she does a second color. Just as slick as all can, just, just fabulous way to do the second color of your heel or an additional color of your heel. And then um, we've got a little bit, we'll talk about what our prizes are. Kay's gonna ring the cowbell and we're gonna have our show and tell of what your yarn is. So that then it's ready, set, go for knitting a shorty. Now, as we said, you don't have to knit a shorty to participate. You can, you can knit one sock the whole month. You can knit none. You can just sit in and listen and learn whatever you want. We're not, we're not here to make your life stressful. But if you think you'd like to do a little short, shorty sprint, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun to do. And then I did bring some yarn home with me that just happened to come to the store today that you just might want to see. So we'll give you, um, we will give you that sneak peek um, uh, towards the end. Wow, we got two full screens tonight. Welcome. So glad you are so enthused. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour here and show you where some things are. Um, um, that are going to be your resources. Now you can see my screen. Um, if you go to our website and you can always go to classes and calendar, and then you can click on sock camp and everything that you might have a question about I'm sure we've missed some things, but everything you might have a question about is going to be here on this page. What we're doing each, each week, there's even links to the different patterns that you can click on here. The other thing that we have put together for you, and this is new, so if you've been here already today or earlier this week, you haven't seen this. So this is a KPS sock blueprint. So in sock knitting, it's, it's basically the same thing across the board from sock pattern to sock pattern to sock pattern from 
from the number of stitches to how you might do a heel to how you might do a toe. And so what I wanted to put together is a basic blueprint numbers of how to do just a basic sock. So you would be able to click here and then you would be able to download this basic sock blueprint. And this is on our website, okay? And it just basically tells you the supply list, the gauge, that this is a basic. So this is what we would often call a vanilla sock. I've been asked, well, what's a vanilla sock? Vanilla sock is just a plain sock. There's no pattern. There's no additional thing. It's top down. It's a little ribbed cuff. It's stockinette. So then we talk about how many to cast on, 56, 64, 72 um, stitches. And we like to do a long tail cast on over two needles. You join for working in the round and then you do your knit to purl to rib for one and a half inches. So we're right here. Now, this is where it gets different. So for a shorty sock, you would knit after your cuff approximately a half an inch. And that could probably be about four rows for you, four to five rows. And then you would start your heel. Okay. So for those of you that don't have a, a, a shorty pattern, or if you've got a pattern that has a heel flap and you're like, well, how am I going to do that? Right here it is. So you would knit. Um, it's about a half an inch. And that will give you enough to keep your socks up. So in knitting shorties, what we discovered last year is that sometimes they can sink down into your shoe. And so if you just do about four rounds there, four to five rounds before you start your heel versus doing a cuff and going right into your heel, um, it'll stay up a little bit better. And so then, or you can knit it seven inches if you want to do a full, we call that a crew length sock. Val and I were like, what kind of sock is that? We decided it's crew length. So we're calling it a crew length, which would be what we know as our standard sock. And then our heel here. And um, we didn't give the instructions on how to do as far as written out step by step. You can go download Denise's um, pattern if you want it step by step. Um, but we've, we've told you how many stitches you need here for your short row heel, whether it's a fish lips kiss or the, um, or the shadow wrap, uh, the shadow wrap, then you knit your foot. And, um, we talk in here about until your foot measures 1.75 inches shorter than your desired length. And that's toe of your toe. So some people have longer toes. <laughs> so um, you can decide how long you want your toe to be. I'm going to tell you that what I use is the base of my, um, the base of my big toe for this, this toe. Okay, so I just put my, I knit my sock and I knit to the base of my big, big toe and then I would do this toe. So this is just a basic kind of, there's lots of different ways to do the toes. There's lots of different ways to do the heels, but this is kind of the basic numbers that you would be able, um, that you would be able to use. So um, that is here as well as all of the links here is the Earth Tones Girl Shadow Wrap Heel By continuing on to create YouTube. a triple stitch and a twin. She has a great to tutorial this, there. A triple stitch. That link is there. Okay. Oh, I shut it all the way off. You can also then, if you'd like to, if let's say that the Shadow Wrap Heel, she does a great job, but if the Shadow Wrap Heel if you want more instruction, you can go to our YouTube channel and find our beginning socks playlist and click on the beginning socks playlist. And this will teach you how to cast on, how to join to work in the round. It teaches you how to check your gauge. It teaches you how to do um, the different, um, oh, this is beginning socks, yep the beginning socks. It teaches you how to do the decreases, the rounded Kitchener's 
and the weaving in the end. So there would be another source um, for you to be able to see um, the beginning socks. There's also the virtual. And so this one is nice. This is probably the one. The other one was a class that we did. This one is step by step. So these little videos are 1.1 1. 1 minute and 23, 1 minute and 27, 2 minutes and 15. So this is row by row by row by row if you want to. And this would be the fish lips kiss heel. And so... Um, I think many of you have done the fish lips kiss heel. So you can easily move into the shadow wrap heel. Um, but if you want to start here, so Cecily, I'm thinking of you as a new knitter, you could start with this one. But um, this is available for you to be able to access on our YouTube. Okay. Okay, how are we doing? Do we have some questions? Again, you got to take yourself off mute. I'm not able to see the chat with your screen on. Oh, you aren't? No. Okay. I haven't figured, well, at least I haven't figured out how to get it. So I'm seeing the chat as well. Okay. All right. Well, let me, let me show you one other thing here. And that is, and then we'll come back and go. That is Ravelry Groups. So um, if you go to Ravelry and you go to community and go to groups, you find knit paper scissors and then we have our discussion. So right here is our June sock camp thread. And this would be where Kay has done a great job of putting all of links to shorties, links to all of our pattern, all of those things. This would be a great place for you to come and ask a question. Kay uh, monitors this 24 seven. Well, not quite, she sleeps. But um, Kay monitors this really well. Um, I monitor it and we'll try, and you can help each other. So if you've got the answer, you don't have to wait for us to answer it. You guys can answer it. But this is going to be a great place for us in the coming uh, month for you to be able. So we have three places. We have our website that has all the details. We have the YouTube channel that you can watch knit paper scissors tutorials or the earth tones tutorials. And then you have our Ravelry, um, your Ravelry source. Okay. So let's stop sharing and see if we have any questions. Okay. I don't see, don't see anything in the chat. Um, all right, so we're going to move forward. If again, you have a question, write it down or write it down on a piece of paper. And let's talk about your basic sock construction. So one of the things that we've learned, um, I guess that I set out to accomplish was really making a sock fit. And many of you have told me that um, you've been pleased with how your socks fit by working on on those things. And, um, and once you get a sock that fits, then you get really enthused about sock knitting. So a couple of important things as you're stepping into your sock knitting, you wanna make sure that your gauge is about eight stitches per inch, okay? Um, it can be nine, it can be seven, but that then impacts the number of stitches you might cast on. It might impact the needle size that you use. So as you're going along here, um, if you feel like it's too tight, let us know so that we can, it's not so bad on a shorty, but if you knit a whole leg and you can't get it on your foot, that's really discouraging. <laughs> so try to, try to check those gauge, but eight is kind of the number, um, eight is kind of the number that we know um, for a good gauge. And we've been on a journey with our heels. So many of you have known about our um, afterthought heel where we inserted. Then we moved to the fish lips kiss heel. And um, so we moved to that. And then many people came and said, hey, I really like earth tones, girl. And I have to tell you that it is, it is easier than the fish lips kiss heel. 
It's very, very similar. So you will build your heel. Um, you will, you will, you will build your heel just the exact same way as you do for the initial um, fish lips kiss heel. And then you will, in the fish lips kiss heel, you'll insert a marker and insert a marker and then you go beyond the marker and beyond the marker. And you don't have to do that in the, in the shadow wrap. So in the shadow wrap, what you do is when you go, remember we build up and then we build back down. And when you start to build back down, then you do a triple um, twin stitch knit and twin stitch purl. So you have three strands there. So I've got a little video that I'm going to show you of just where mine was um, and how I did the insert of the, of the color, because that is one of the things that I love the most of what Denise taught. Okay, we have a question. We do have a question. Mm -hmm. When doing a toe up slash down pattern. How mm -hmm. do you determine how long you make it before you start knitting your foot? Before you start knitting your foot, toe up. Toe up would be you knit your foot right away, right? Right, you do your toe, then you'd start your foot. And I, I take the question is how much? <laughs> how long do you want your toe to be? Yes. Okay. I, That's well, what I'm interpreting it as. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we could use that guideline um, that we just showed from the, you know, some people, I have some people that have really long toes. And so their toe, their toe needs to be um, two and a half inches, or it might be an inch and a half. Um, uh, have you knit, uh, this is, Who's asking this question? Nancy, have you knit a, a top down sock, Nancy, so that then you know how uh, how how your toe works? How long your toe needs to be? Um, you mean like the yeah. cuff first and then the heel? Yeah. yeah. And no, I well, yeah, that's how I've made all of them. I've never done a toe first and then the rest of it. Uh huh. So I didn't know how you figure out how to do the toe. I, I found a pattern that I like for a shorty uh -huh. and it starts at toe first uh -huh. and then it goes into a pattern, like a kind of a lacy pattern. And then you do the heel and then the cuff. And mm -hmm. so I was trying to figure out how long you need to make your toe. Well, does the pattern tell you like how, how it pattern should tell you your increases to a certain point to where you get to 32 stitches, 64 stitches or. Yeah, it does. But I make mine a little bit longer usually than what it tells me in a pattern when I'm doing mine. Okay. Because, hey, yeah. you know, when I do my foot part, I have to do before right. I start my toe. I have to do my foot like six and a half inches. And then I do a couple of extra, like, um, you know, when you decrease and then you do a knit row, uh -huh. I end up doing a couple of extra decrease rows, mm -hmm. you know, decrease row, knit row, decrease mm -hmm. row, knit row. Mm -hmm. I do a couple of extra of those because Nancy, my toes are a little bit longer. Uh huh. Right. What I think I would do, Nancy, is take one of the socks that you really like the fit of and you know where the heel ended on that are you do you do the fish lips kiss or a I have yeah. or like that okay because then you kind of know where your heel um starts and ends so if you know that spot right. you can measure on that sock to know then when you would start doing your um heel but then you can look at that whole what you're doing is looking at that whole distance from toe to heel so you get the right distance there before you start your heel, but then figure out how much of a toe you want and just subtract that out. So Nancy, by doing a toe up, it's, it's kind of like when you first started knitting socks, you're going to have to play with the fit. So, you know, that's, uh, I think Kay's advice is great on lay one out there and measure it out and see, but that's not all bad to learn to do the toe up, you know, you, and as I've said before, sock knitting is all about knowing your numbers. What's your number? So my cuff number typically is six and a half. 
I do my heel. I knit four and a half and then, or five and a half with a different toe. And then I do my toe. So it's really as simple as that of knowing what your numbers are. Okay. As you're all kind of looking at, at deer in the headlights. <laughs> okay. Let's watch. Um, I'm going to just show you a couple little clips. I didn't, I didn't film a lot because she has such great videos on this, but I do want to share with you. Um, just a couple of things that I did um, with, as I explain her, a little bit of her, um, just a few tips about the new uh, shadow wrap heel technique um, that we are now using. If you are familiar with the fish lips kiss or the other short row, a short row heel that we have taught before, you'll have no problem with this heel. It's very, very, very similar. Um, it's a little more flat, uh, fits beautifully. I'm going to say that it's just a smidge more roomy. And so that's one of the things we teach is how do you know your numbers for your sock knitting? So um, typically I would knit five and a half, I knit five and a quarter and did a decrease playing round heel, um, a shorter, or I'm sorry, toe, a shorter toe. Um, so therefore, um, the sock fits beautifully. And so I'm just going to show you a couple of things that um, I would recommend. We are referring you to Earth Tones Girl um, her tutorials, and she has a no fear sock knitting class. This is from her class 11. You can find it all on YouTube. There's no reason, so well done, no reason for us to redo it. I have got this sock to the point where I'm ready to, um, add my contrasting heel, and, um, the technique that, um, I learned from her, uh, Denise, is how to not break this yarn. So we have done it before where we moved it over here and then kept knitting. And so um, you will see that this, this is, this is perfect. <laughs> um, and that is done without any additional kind of um, weaving in. So it's really terrific. So when you get ready to start your shadow wrap heel, you just leave the yarn attached. You do not cut the yarn. And um, you will just introduce your, whoop. that's why we like these, because they stay on and keep your socks, the yarn on the sock. They're little barber cords that we have at the shop from Jessica that uh, we cut up and can use this way. So you introduce your, alternative color and you're going to work you're just going to leave your main yarn there and you'll work across and do your twin stitching you build it up and then you build it down and um, that tutorial is with um, earth tone girls as well that we have linked and i'll come back in just a minute and show you the tips uh, for as we finish to make sure that we cinch up the yarn okay I've worked the complete shadow wrap heel to where I'm down to the final on the knit side, uh, knit together. And one of the things that is important when you're doing the, the triple, which is part of the shadow wrap, you really get to make sure that you get your needle in there and catch all three of those strands so that one doesn't get uh, left behind. So that completes it. You still have one left over here. You're going to cut your contrasting yarn and then you will remember and you want to cut it where it's about oh at least five inches to six inches long. Now we need to get back over here to use our um, our yarn that we're our main yarn that we didn't cut. And you'll remember this in our other uh, 
our other heel, we would do some transferring. And if you were knitting with two circular needles, you wouldn't have to do that. And in Denise's uh, tutorial, she does knit with two circulars. But if you're knitting on a magic loop, you've got to get the needle back to the other side so that you're ready to go. So you're just going to click these stitches back and be ready to work um, with your main yarn again. With this technique, you don't cut the main yarn. So that's really nice if you're doing a striping yarn because you can stay in, um, in, in your position that you are already in your yarn or even some of the barricades are nice just to stay where you're at. But you're just clicking this back to the beginning and then I'll show you where your yarns are. And so when you do this, you're gonna take that whole triple stitch so it just needs to be back over here. So again, make sure to get into all three strands when you transfer it. Then you'll turn it around and you'll see that you've got your end to weave in here of the contrasting color and your end to weave in here. And you're going to knit with your main color before you do that weaving. So you'll pick up your main color here and um, you're going to knit this triple stitch. So again, you need to make sure you've got all of the strands and then there's, you know, you gotta kind of give it a, a tug up because it's uh, where you introduce your contrast color. So you knit into all three and then at that point, I'm going to come back and I'm gonna give that a tug. And then we're going to knit across and we'll start to do our weaving in of the ends. So you can see those triple strands and uh, the triple strands is um, what we're talking about with the shadow wrap. So it's uh, where you're doing your twin stitch again. So you're lifting it up and doing that um, again. Okay, this just must be a picture. <laughs> Hang on. I. Okay. Okay, I've knit across uh, to the last eight. You can do six. All right, I've knit across and I'm ready to, to begin to weave in the contrasting color. And so you'll insert into the first stitch and I uh, put the contrasting color over and then I'm going, I'm, I typically knit continental, but I'll do a throwing with my main color and I'll wrap it around that needle and that traps that contrasting color. It's gonna be loose for a minute. And then, um, I'll knit with the color, the main color, and then you alternate those. So you'll go insert, wrap over, or un take your needle under, and that's trapping that yarn. And then your next stitch is a plain stitch. I'm gonna pull these up pretty tight. You can see there that I, I'm, I'm getting rid of my gaps. Okay, and I did a plain one. So then I come over, unwrap, and then I'll do another plain one. And that will be trapping this. I like to do about eight stitches. Give everything a cinch up and then you can even Sorry, pull that and we can, sorry, we can cinch that up even more when we're done so that we can take a look at how, how uh, we have eliminated our hole here. Now you're going to knit across to about the eighth stitch from the end, end, and then I'll show you how you're going to weave in this 
um, before we get to the end of the round. This is the, the next part is the newest part. And this is the, this is the method that these are, this is very weave and Steven kind of thing, but um, she just does it a little bit different that really works nicely. And this is the last one. Okay, I've knit across uh, to the last eight. You can do six stitches. And then this is really magical. This is where I'm going to weave this end in. And so what you're going to do is you're going to bring that end in between and that tail in between the stitches there. And again, it's basically what I just did. You'll enter the stitch and you'll go under that tail. You'll grab your main color yarn and you'll knit it. And that will trap that. And you just leave it on the outside. It's okay. And then you'll knit one plane. And then you'll trap. Knit one plane. Trap. And you know, it's okay that it's not tight, that your finger's in there, because we're going to be able to cinch it up. One more trap and then finish. Okay, so you pull your needle out and your finger out, and then you can see that you've got quite a bit of loop there. But if you watch, you pull here on that tail and that cinches it up so perfectly. And in a minute, we'll be able to pull that back out. So now you're all the way around and you're ready to just keep to just keep going with your main color yarn. So you'll turn and get in position to do um, to continue with the foot of your sock, and you'll be able to cinch this up again once we've taken a few steps around. So I do a couple rounds, and then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to, let's look inside here. When you come back, you will come in and you will pull up this yarn to make sure that you've got it as tight as you want without puckering. And then you pull the same side up so you can see how it's cinching up. And then um, tuck, those, uh, tuck those tails in. And you can just pull this one right now. You can just pull them out. So he's not hanging out on the outside if that bothers you um, before you get too many rows. And then both of those will be in and ready to go. Really, really neat. Um, it's the best way I've seen to avoid, uh, avoid the holes. And I did it on this sock and I didn't have to do any, this is how nice it looks. I did not have to do any cinching up with uh, weaving in ends or anything. This is just how it knit um, using that technique. Okay. Before we move away from the screen, I do want to show you your tip for this, uh, this week. This is uh, my socks that I needed to wash. So, um, I tend to wear my socks a lot before I wash them. It's not like my white workout socks that I would wear, you know, wear once. But my knit socks, I, I don't wash as often. But I, um, I turned them on inside out and I washed all these together. And I, I was questioning whether I should wash them together because you could see that they're similar colors except for my little gray one peeking out over there. And we, we have used the Shout Color Catchers. If you have not used these, um, I would highly recommend because you will see that they are white right in the box. And look at what it was when I brought it out. Do you see it? It was kind of yellow. 
So it was picking up some of the colors, even though I have washed these socks a number of times. But look at the difference in that color catcher. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you spend a lot of time on your socks. Um, we, you know, they're kind of precious to us. And so I always, if I, and I don't want to just wash one pair of socks at a time in the machine. Um, and so I will use a color catcher always. And I do try to, I do try to wash likes together. So there it is. It shows, um, shows the, shows the color catcher. And then this is how I dry them. So typically I do use a, I do use my blocking if I'm doing like one, but if I've got a bunch like this, I just then pat them, pat them out and let them dry there on top of my dryer. So, um, or on a counter or something like that. And they dry up nicely and they really kind of get back into shape. So I wanted to show you, I snapped those pictures so that um, I could show you those. Okay, I think we have a couple questions. You do have. Um, Cindy, I think, was responding to Nancy's things about the toe. And she mm -hmm. says that you can cast on fewer stitches than the pattern suggests to start with. Then you would be doing more increases and a knit row like you do more decrease and knit rounds when working the cuff down. So you can do smaller stitches and do more increases where an increased row, a knit row, an increased row to get a longer toe. Okay. And Great. then Julie is asking on the heel, do you just cut those contrasting ends with the scissor then? So the answer is yes, you can. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of weaving it in as you go. Now, sometimes, Julie, sometimes, sometimes I, I weave it back. Um, uh, but I try to make myself just cut them. Katie, what do you do? Do you just cut them? Yep. I have gotten to where I just cut them and with my color work socks where I'm changing colors quite frequently, I do this technique and it works wonderfully and I have not had a problem with things coming undone. No. Yeah, that's the whole idea. And you know, if you saw Facebook Live today, I have my linen scarf. I did that whole technique, the weaving in as we did. I did that whole technique on that scarf. And so then all I had to do was do clip, 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 clip. So I, I pretty much do it with all of my knitting now. And it just makes life a lot easier. Now, if this is your first sock, I, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed because we really jumped way ahead uh, of things. So um, I'm going to encourage you to watch our step-by-step -step videos for that. And then also to watch the earth tones uh, for that uh shadow wrap heel and i will put the link in the ravelry page to her color contrast video it's about 16 minutes long the one i kind of showed you here and she walks you through that but i just wanted to give you some of those tips does that look like uh something that's going to make it really easy for you to do it's really great it's just the best part and uh those of us that have kind of made the transition to this um, shadow wrap heel, it just keeps getting easier, doesn't it, Kay? <clears throat> well, you can't hear you. I love doing the shadow wrap and I was really one that did the fish lips for quite a few years and that was my favorite heel. I'm getting the same heel, but I really like that triple stitch in there and how it all comes together. Plus, I don't have to spend nearly as much time watching what I'm doing on the heel because somehow doing that triple stitch, it's easier to see it than a double to know. Because sometimes I do the double and then I bypass over it or do another double too soon. The triple is just, it's, it's a great technique and I really like using that for my heels now. Yeah, thanks. So I know, Anne, you had used it, been using it for a while. You encouraged us with that. And I know Susan Feely been using it as well. Um, so I think that's what's really good is that we're flexible. And, um, you know, if you love a heel flap 
and gusset, then by all means, knit a heel flap and gusset. If you like toe up, by all means, knit toe up. It's all about experimenting and finding what really works for you. As I often say to people, we have a lot to make. I imagine you have a few things at home that you're working on. Um, and so I'm always about how can I get this done efficiently, quickly, easy, um, I don't want to have to have papers with me. I don't want to have to have my phone with me. I just want to know it in my head. And that's the kind of sock knitter I know many of you have become as well and are working to. And shorties is a great way uh, to do this. So how does our sock sprint work? Uh, we're going to show our yarn here in a minute if you want to participate and um, kale ring or cowbell. And then you can cast on and go. And I will tell you that uh, I've said this for the last several weeks that people that did it last last year, they were impressed with how 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 they could do it. I mean, it's just really a fun challenge. And I think you'll be very surprised that you'll be through the heel. I mean, you can get to the heel by the eight o'clock tonight, um, really, um, and be ready to do your heel uh, right away. So it gives you an opportunity to practice it. So if you do a sprint this week and you complete, and the sprint is two, so you can't just finish one, you have to finish both shorties. Um, and you can do any pattern that you want, um, or you can just do a plain vanilla, just like that one we told you that I showed you about earlier, just, which is just stockinette. If you complete it, and then we're going to give you a baby bee next week. So you come on and you say, here's my, here's my socks. I got them done. And um, I think it's a baby bee. Is that our first one? I think so. Yeah. Then, um, um, and then after that, um, if you complete your, if you say next week, I want to do it again, then you would get a pattern. You would get um, the little um, pattern that we're giving away, the corn, cornichette pattern. Is that what it's called, Kay? Yeah, the cornichette. Cornichette pattern, thanks. And then I don't know if I have my bag. I'll have it, but I think you've all seen the bag. If you do it three times, um, then you, the third time, then you get a $5, okay's got it, $5 coupon to get one of the manga bags that will be in at the end of the month. So if you do all three, you get all three prizes. So it's a big deal, not just one, but if you do one, then you get your baby B. If you do two, you get the free pattern. So you can decide, you know, I just want to do one and I don't want to do one until the end of the month. That's okay. You can hang out with us and then you say, hey, that last week I want to do a one. That's fine. You can still earn your baby bee. Okay. So one uh, sock sprint, get you a baby bee. Two, get your baby bee and a pattern. Three, get your baby bee, a pattern and $5 coupon off the manga bag. Um, we are going to have some heel and toe uh, days and um, those are going to be on the 18th from 11 to 2. They're going to be on the 21st from 11 to 3 and on the 30th from 1 to 4. So if you've got a bunch of socks that you've been working on that you'd like to maybe just really intensely practice your heel or intensely practice your toe or, or practice kitchenering, maybe you get them all to the kitchener spot, come in and um, we'll help you work on that until you can get that kind of uh, that kind of skill uh, perfected. And then next week, Kay's going to be showing us nine inch circulars and giving us tips on how she does all of her socks on nine inch circulars, as well as her color work. So Kay has really gotten into color work <laughs> and um, does some beautiful, beautiful socks on color work. And um, so she's going to talk about what she does and how that works and how that and, and what's been working for her for her nine inch circulars, which are, or I guess they're about 10. Is that what you're doing, Kay, 10, 10 inches? They really yeah. come out to be a 10 inch when you're using the little interchangeables. The yeah. little interchangeables, which but work. Can, um, I can do 56 stitches on that size. So it, it, it works well for anything 56 and above. Okay, so who's gonna sock sprint? If you're sock sprinting, let's see your let's see your yarn. Okay, hold them up. Oh my gosh, looking beautiful. Okay, very good. 
All right. So there we go. Oh, we're just seeing all kinds of fun things. Fabulous. All right. Do you have any questions um, before we ring our cowbell? Anything that you that we can answer for you? There we go. Linda saw yours. Thanks. Um, any questions we can answer for you? Any anything that uh, we can help you with? Okay. Next week, we're going to have a lot more conversation. Um, so good luck. And um, if you have any, if you need any help, don't hesitate to stop in and, and let us help or give us a call. We can Zoom with you. If you're out of, not in Lincoln, we can, we'll be happy to do that with you. And um, if you need help, just kind of getting started. Cecily, did we talk about your, your shoe size? Oop, can't hear you. I looked at a couple of sizing guides. Okay. So um, you get, what are you going to do? 64? Say that again. You're in cast on 64? Yes. Okay. All right. Then you're spot on. I think you're going to be great. You're going to do okay. good. Okay. You were good. You better, we better warn her, right? They're all smiling because they know how hooked, how hooked you get on softbox. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. You got that cowbell? Okay, there she is. All right, ready, set. We can't hear you. Well, uh, you must be on mute, okay? Oh, your cowbell is not is not ringing very loud. Yeah. So. Hang on. No. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, all right. There it is. Another <laughs> <laughs> one next week. Oh, there it is. Now it's working. Okay, ready, set, go. Good luck with your uh, shorty sock and we'll see you all next Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>